Okay, let's do our warm ups and a little standing practice today. So, feet hip width apart, turn straight ahead, sitting bones down, activate your core, of course, and bring your shoulders back and down. Lift your crown toward the ceiling, keep that lower back supported, and breathe. Take a few moments just centering inward, getting that yoga perspective. And then inhale, arms to shoulder level. Exhale, hands to your heart. Stretch out to the front. And exhale, the hands behind you. Just clasp the fingers gently and push them to the floor. Lift your heart. Stretch your head back. Pivot at your hips. Come on over as you exhale. And just go as deeply as you feel appropriate today. Move your chin around. Get the neck releasing a little bit more. And then knees slightly bent, work your way from the bottom of the spine all the way back up and lift your heart. Shoulders down and head back. Take a moment, just breathing, opening through the chest. Inhale, upright, release your arms. Take a few moments to breathe as you focus inward. Spread your toes and again, arms at shoulder level, hands to your chest. Stretch the front and clasp your hands opposite way behind you. So one finger over. Lift your heart, stretch and pivot over. And again, bring your hands up and your head down. Just move those shoulders a little bit further to the front. And again, lift your sitting bones for that leg stretch. And then bend your knees slightly, keep the chin gently in as you wind your way all the way back into the upper body back bend. Stretch out through your head, drop your shoulders, and again, stretch through your neck as well as your spine. And then inhale upright, releasing into mountain pose, feeling that energy starting to circulate. Let's do our side stretches. So keep one arm down and the other one out. Palm toward the ceiling, hand over your shoulder. Stretch the arms away and lean, no twist to the side. So make sure both shoulders face the front. Stretch out through the fingers and through the toes and push that foot you're leaning away from down. Take a breath. Relax. And then inhale up, exhale that arm down, and bring the other arm out. Palm to the ceiling, hand over your shoulder. <clears throat> Stretch the arms away, lean to the side, and remember, don't twist, just stay facing the front. Get those ribs really stretching apart on this one, on this side. And then open up as you come up, and release. Feel the sides still more stretched apart, and then really stretch the spine. So remember, base of the skull, base of the spine, stretch apart for your twist. So arms out, shoulders down, palms up, hands over your shoulders. Just clasp your elbows and bring your arms next to your ears. Stretch the spine apart, turn to the side. Again, keep the weight on both feet as you pivot over. Deepen as much as you'd like, lifting the sitting bones, stretching the legs. Take a breath or two. Just relax in the twist. And then in the twist still, work your way up and lift your heart. So remember, upper body only back bending when you're in the twist so that you don't overwork that low back. Shoulders are down, elbows stretching out. And then inhale upright, exhale to the center and switch your arms around. And again, bring your arms next to your ears, stretch the spine, turn to the opposite side. Take a breath, exhale over. Come as far down as feels right for you on this side. Keep the weight on both feet as evenly as you can. Take a moment, just breathing. Letting things relax. 
and then slowly work your way up in the twist. And again, upper body only back then as you lift your foot. Bring those shoulders down away from your ears. And don't forget to breathe. And then inhale upright, exhale around to the center, shoulders down, fingertips high, coming into your extended bend. Feel that centering into your feet. Breathe, drop those shoulders, keep them away from your ears. Keep that core active, supporting your spine. Don't forget to stretch and breathe. And then pivot forward from your hips. Stretch it out and drop into left. Take a moment, just breathing. Pull in deeper with your hands behind your legs if you want to. Feel the stretch on your back. And then arms back to the center as you again wind up from the bottom of your spine into mountain pose. Take a moment as you get back to standing. Feeling your body. And let's step wide. And turn your feet slightly out. And then bend your knees and bring your body straight down. So a little squat. So the knees don't go beyond your toes. The sitting bones go slightly behind you, but dropping to the floor. And your spine is as straight upright as you can. Feel that core really working to support that. Take a moment and breathe. Just go deeply into that squat as much as you want. Remember, personal practice, don't overdo your knees. And then straighten up, bring your arms out, palms to the ceiling, and cross the wrists overhead, looking up at them, and then bring the arms back down. And come back into the squat. Again, just sink straight down. This one's called horse. And then inhale, coming up, bringing those arms up, cross the other way if you can remember which way. And then bring them back down into the squat. Cross the other way as you come down. Inhale up, cross one way, and down. And let's do that once more, standing up and coming back down. And then just deepen into your squat gently. Bring your arms straight out from the shoulders. Turn the palms up, bend your elbows, goddess position. Sink those sitting bones straight down. That spine is still straight. And then coming up, release. And again, into mountain pose. Take a moment, feel your body a little bit more activated through that midsection, perhaps. A little bit more energized through the shoulders, maybe the knees too. And take a moment to breathe, hands to your heart. Inhale, follow your hands up. A nice back bend with those hands behind you. Swan dive forward, so bringing the arms out, pivoting forward parallel to the floor. And then drop into ragdoll. Just take a moment, heavy. Hands up under your knees into that halfway up stretch. Lengthen through the spine, through the legs, through the arms, everything straight. And then bend your knees, drop your hands down. And let's clasp the big toes and come into gorilla pose. So straightening your knees. Straightening your shoulders, your arms, and your spine. Take a moment, breathe, stretch it out. Keep stretching through your neck, sitting bones back, getting a straight line through the whole body as you can. And again, releasing your toes, another wind up back into mountain pose. Take a moment as you get there, just feel that spine a little bit more activated. And we'll step wide for our warrior. So remember, as wide as you like, the wider you go, the deeper your squat goes in your warrior. So we're going to start with warrior two, sitting bones down, core active, arms at shoulder level. 
Spread out through your toes and turn your foot 90 degrees. And then the other one, heel back, toes forward, so those knees and toes line up. Take a moment and breathe. Stretch the arms apart. Bend your front knee right above the ankle. Make sure it's not going in. You should be able to see your big toe, but not all of them. And make sure it's not going out either. The body is sinking straight down, not leaning forward yet. Spread your toes. Put the weight into that back foot as much as your front foot. And don't forget to breathe. And you can rotate your upper body slightly to look over that front hand, or you can just stay looking forward in the starting position. Whatever's good for your neck. Drop those shoulder blades towards your waist. Make sure you're not overworking the shoulders. And make sure both feet support you evenly. And then straighten your front knee. Turn the feet back to the front. Star position, energize it. Go ahead and release the arms a moment. So we're going to do our warrior to the opposite side, and then we're going to do some variations on. So again, sitting bones down, keep the core active, and those hips nice and open, shoulders face forward, arms up at shoulder level, stretch it out, and turn your feet one to the side, and the other one angled. And again, keep the whole body facing the way you started, Bending your front knee, come down into your squat of warrior. And again, make sure that that knee isn't caving in or out. Sink your body straight down, not forward. And don't forget to put the weight into the back foot as much as the front leg. So you can go as deeply as having the thigh bone parallel to the floor, which means start with your feet further apart. Take a moment and breathe. Just relax, feel that core supporting you, the spine is straight, the arms or shoulders relaxing down as much as you can. And then again, straighten your knee, feet to the front, take your star position, energize, and well, let's release those arms. So variations. As we get into the variations, remember personal practice. So do what's right for you. You like it with your feet wider and your deeper squat, that's fine. You can start there or you can just stay where you were or come closer, either way works. And as we get into our variations, if they feel like they're good for you, fine. Otherwise, go back to our previous version. Again, arms at shoulder level. Turning your feet 90 degrees for that first one. Feel that toes flow. Make sure the knee goes the direction your toes are pointing. Then your front knee sink into your warrior two straight down. Spread your toes. Sink evenly into that back foot as well as the front foot. Take a moment and worry. And now we're going to pivot at the hip joint like we do in triangles. So push way forward. Palms to the front. And pivot. So bring that arm down along your leg or near it or wherever it goes. The other one straight across from it. Remember that top hip is pulling back so that your hips stay facing the side of the mat. And so do your shoulders. Everything facing the side still, just like we started. So take a moment there with that knee bent, still right above your ankle. And the hands stretching apart. And then take your hand in the air and pivot yourself back up, just like in triangle, palms toward the floor, straighten the knee, and turn the feet forward. Go ahead and release the arms a moment. Take a breath, because we're going to balance the body and go the other way. Shoulders back and down, core active, arms up. Turn your foot, heel back, toes forward, sink those feet down, Remember, hips stay front, shoulders stay front all the time on the or two. And again, bend your front knee, sink your body straight down. Come into your warrior two, breathe into it, stay there if that's where you want to stay. And then again, push from the hip joint out, turn the palms to the front, and pivot. So if you come only part way, that's okay. Or if you go all the way, Arm along your leg, that's fine too. Just keep the other arm straight across from the 
front one. Take a breath, stretch your head, pull that top hip back, make sure your hips and shoulders face the side of the neck. Take a breath, remember no pressure in this hand, it's just positioning. And then pivot back up, arms toward the floor in your warrior, straighten the knee, and feet to the front. Energize that spine and release. So we're gonna go one version more. As we do that, it gets more energetic. So remember, do what's right through your body. Take a moment and breathe. Exhale any tension. Arms up and out. Turn your feet. Make sure the hips stay facing the side of the mat and the shoulders too. Peel that toes forward on that back foot. Keep it straight on that back leg and your front knee. Sink straight down, again, coming into your warrior two. Take a breath, just relax. And we'll go a little deeper this time, so we're getting closer, pivoting, coming into your angle pose, and breathe. You can stay there, or it'll get a bind. So bring your front arm inside, bring your back arm around to the back, and see if you can clasp your hands behind you. If not, just hold on to your hips. Keep that shoulder pulling back, the top shoulder as well, the top hip pulling back so that you're still facing the side. Gets a little balancey, so make sure you're good and supported on both feet. Take a breath, stretch it out. And when you're ready to release, bring the one hand down, the other one back up. And again, we put that hand in the air, pivot back into warrior two, and straighten into your stall. And release. Take a moment breathing. And of course, yeah, going to do it to the other side as well. So we got some big chest opener as we go into the bind. So the more you can clasp your hands, the more open you are across the heart and chest. If that's not working for you, remember, just hold toward the hips or stay in that pivot position. And again, arms up, stretching out, shoulders down, turn your feet, coming into your warrior two. Sink evenly into your feet. Remember, you've got as much weight on both feet as possible. So don't let that front foot do all the work. Push forward. Even as you're pushing that, that foot is supporting you still. Again, pivoting into your angle pose. Stretch it out and stay there. So bring that hand on the inside, or reach it back, pull that hand from the top. And again, pulling your shoulder back, your top hip back, so your body is facing the side. Take a breath. A little more energetic than some of our practices. So go ahead, keep breathing. You can do that in jai breath. If you can do that back of the throat breathing, that sometimes helps energize as well. Take a breath, just relax. And again, bring your arms back, pivot back up, warrior two, keep that knee over the ankle, and then straightening it into your spine. Stretch it out. And release. Again, take a moment, sinking evenly into your feet. Feel your body. We're going to do one more warrior variation. So again, this one's a little bit, I think, easier than the bind. So don't worry about getting even more into some sort of silly position because we're not going to next. The next one's a little easier. Again, sitting bones down, spine straight, core active, arms and shoulder level. Once more, spread your toes, sink into your feet, and turn the feet into your warrior position. And your knees sinking straight down. So we're gonna stay in this position in our warrior two. We're gonna be pivoting. So bringing the back arm around, bring it around to be next to that front hand. So you are turning the back hip this time and the shoulder to face that front leg. Again, making sure your knee stays over the ankle. 
And then pull the arm back. This is shooting warrior. And as if you're pulling the bow string. And then bring the hand back. And again, pulling the bow straight, rotating your whole body back to the side, working to the side. And again, turning to the front. And then pull it back. And shoot your arrow back into warrior two. And then straighten your knee and energize your star to the front. And release. So yeah. You got to do that one to the other side. So again, take a moment of getting centered and grounded, sinking into your feet, sitting bones down, core supporting you, shoulders relaxing down. Take a breath, stretch your spine apart, and bring those arms up and shoulder. Turn your feet and into your warrior two. Sink down. Get the weight into both feet and make sure those hips are facing the side along with the shoulders. And then rotate the whole body slightly and lift that hand next to the head. Again, as you're there, make sure that knee is above your ankle and your toes are spreading and that back foot is supporting you as much as the foot. Pull the elbow back, up in your bow, and get pulled. Pull you completely next to your chin. And again, rotate back and twist the hip. And again, pulling the bow back. Energize it. Keep that arm at shoulder level, both arms. And again, rotate back to the hip. Once again, pull that bow back, getting that position, turning to the side of the mint. And shoot the bow back into warrior two. Straighten your knee, turn the feet forward, keep the shoulders down, energize the star, and step in the mountain pose. Take a moment and breathe. Feel those shoulders, lots of work. Feel the core, feel the legs. Notice what was working in your body today. Hands to your heart. Inhale, follow the hands up, a nice back bend, stretch the whole body, swan dive forward, pivot on over into right hand. Take a moment there, just hanging, relaxing, letting everything release. Slide the hands up under your knees into arc, halfway up stretch, and then bending your knees, come to the floor for our child pose transition. Hips to your heels, hands comes up, and forehead to the feet. Take a breath. Just go relax. Pull the tension out of your hips. And then inhale, sit up, and slide off, coming into our step position. Take a moment there, pressing out through your heel, pulling back with your toes, sitting bones, of course, slightly behind you. Shoulders back and down, core active. Take a moment to breathe. Let's dive our dolphin. So bring your foot to your inner thigh, knee out to the side, and then this knee to the front with the heel coming back near, not under your hip. Stretch your spine, let it move up on that hip, as you turn hips, ribs, and shoulder to your first knee. So you're coming with your hands on the leg or the floor, whatever's comfortable, ribs in, tuck the chin, exhale then. Forehead toward the knee, and then face to the front, lifting heart toward the ceiling, coming up to the sun and the sky on the inhalation. You're the dolphin. Exhale and dive under, and inhale and come to the top. Shoulders are down. Just go through your range of motion with your breath, feeling that circulation through your spine, releasing through the hips, just relaxing as you do it. And then the next time you come up to the sun and the sky, pause at the top, exhale around to the center, and release into staff position. 
Take a moment there, feeling that energy flowing through you as we're going to dive our dolphin yeah, to the other side. So left foot to the inner right thigh, heel, elbow, elbow, knee out, and bring the other knee to the front with the heel near, but not under your hip. Let the hip come up as you turn, exhaling over to that left knee. Hands on the floor or the leg as you dive your dolphin, chin tucking under, forehead diving under as you exhale. And then face forward, lift your heart to the sun and the sky, and a little back bend as you come up on the inhalation. And again, dive your dolphin as playfully or as slowly as you want today. Just feeling that hip moving, that spine going through its whole range of motion, forward bending down, backward bending up as you breathe with your practice. And again, the next time your body comes Inhaling up to the sun and the sky, just pause, appreciate it, and turn back to the center. Release your legs into staff position and bring the feet to the end of the mat. Core activated, and we're going to roll slowly to the floor. Just come into your reclined integration. Let your shoulders sink down, your hands near your hips. And it turns hip with the point. And let's do a little lower back twist. So bend your right leg, put the foot on the left thigh, keep your head on the floor, your arms at T position as we roll all the way over to the left side. Hands together on the floor, knee all the way down. The more you keep the knee on the floor, remember the more your low back goes in the twist. Pad if you need to. Bring your right hand right above your shoulder. Keep it at shoulder level. Palm open to the ceiling as you open your heart into the twist. Bring that hand toward the floor. If it doesn't hit the floor, that's okay. Just go as far as gravity brings it and then relax. Turn your head toward the hand behind you and let the neck have a twist as well. Remember, personal practice. Do what's right for your body in your twists. Always breathe into it. Really exhale, releasing the ligaments along the spine and allowing gravity to bring you deeper into your twists whenever your body is ready. Never force your twists, just let it happen. And of course, you want to hold your twists longer on your own but for now, we want to release so we can have time to relax. So just go ahead and roll onto your back, releasing the knee, sliding the leg near the other one, coming back into your starting position. Take a breath. Just exhale. Sitting bones towards your heels as you bend your left leg and put the foot on the right thigh. Again, keep your head on the floor so you don't overwork your neck as you roll over toward the right. Knee all the way down, hands together, getting everything straight to start, and then hold the knee with your right hand, and lift your left hand right above the shoulder. Look up at it, and lower the hand. Remember, right at shoulder level, not going up toward your head or down toward your foot, but straight back. Letting that chest get a good opening through the heart. And again, gravity will bring you as far as it wants to go. Just relax into it when you get there. And as you exhale and let the ligaments release, that hand may come with further toward the floor. Keeping the knee down, that's the low back twist. Don't do too much if your low back has issues. And of course, don't turn your head as much if your neck doesn't want to go there. Just allow your twist as much or as little as your body needs and wants today. Take a breath. Just relax. Deepen into it. And allow everything to relax. Well, let your twist happen. Never force it. But for now, we need to release so we can have our relaxation. 
So go ahead and let go of the knee, rolling onto your back, side that foot down near the other one. And again, coming into our corpse position, relaxation, hands, palms up at your sides, and toes together. Just release your legs, let those feet drop slightly apart. Follow your head slide side to side, letting those neck issues just release any tension. Shoulders down, shoulder blades to the floor. Let the heart open and let your body relax completely. Deep breaths in. Exhale, let your belly soften. Lots of core work in our warriors today. Just let everything release. Exhale, any tightness. Body deepening into that earth support. Just let it go. And as you breathe more deeply, and let your body sink gently into the earth support. Just allow thoughts of your body to release from your awareness. And let other thoughts come to your mind, but let them flow out without attention. Allowing the thoughts to flow as easily as your breath. No need to pay attention to the past or anticipate the future. Just let the thoughts flow without any awareness, allowing your attention to leave your body and your mind. And let the thoughts float away, your awareness turn inward. Find the peace within. Feel your body. Feel your mind. And take a few moments being in peace. Just let your body keep softening and sinking, your mind drifting for as long as you can relax today. But if it's time to get ready for the rest of your day, just begin drawing energy and awareness with the breath back to the mind, to the room, to your body. And as you breathe more deeply, just begin moving your body gently, however feels good for you. Moving slowly. Stretching more completely as you breathe more deeply whenever you're ready. And of course, when you're ready for your final yoga hug of appreciation, sitting bones towards your heels, heels up towards your hips, and knees up towards your heart. Wrap your arms around, give yourself that appreciative yoga hug. Let your body know you appreciate its yoga work today and the work your body does for you every day. And when you're ready to release, head and feet on the floor, just roll to the side and sit back up, getting ready for whatever's ahead for you today. Thanks for joining me.